right, so mine is an emergent life. Thank you very much for your welcome. Where were you in 1962? I think a lot of you might have been just in your parents' hearts, like just a, a seed idea waiting to become. And others were out there kind of doing some things and experimenting like me. So I graduated from Oakland High School and had no real clear idea of where I wanted to go, what kind of career I was headed towards, and what I was going to do. I grew up in a non-traditional family, a non-nuclear family. And maybe that is why I was attracted to diversity and to non-traditional situations, and were they ever to come. <laughs> there was so much happening in the Bay Area in the 60s. The Black Panther Party had started in Oakland. The political protest in Berkeley made it a center of student activity. And San Francisco was the home of the beatniks and then the counterculture of the hippies. The world that I had grown up in was changing by the minute. During my college years at UC Davis, I was swept up by the civil rights movement, the free speech movement, and the emerging environmental movement, which was spurred by the comment made by Governor Ronald Reagan that if you had seen one redwood tree, you had seen them all. <laughs> I was learning that what I had been taught in my history classes were, and what was really going on in our community were two entirely different things. In 1967, I became the first in my group of friends to become a mother. And now I had a deeper motivation to make the world, the world a better place for my daughter, Siri. My husband and I joined what we called the movement and dedicated to creating a more just and egalitarian society. For the following five years, my family and I participated in the anti-war movement in causes um, like People's Park and getting ROTC off of campus. We were organizing, demonstrating, and educating others. But the members of that movement didn't necessarily live by its principles. Men took all the lead roles, while we women were relegated to making snacks and taking notes. And our ideas were often co-opted by them. Our family lives were stressful, and our children suffered from too many adult-centered activities and too many meetings. Meetings, meetings, meetings. So I was an easy recruit to the emerging movement for women's rights. First, I joined a consciousness raising group. We read books and articles on the oppression of women. We shared our life stories and our challenges and our personal dreams and our hopes for our children. We wrote stories and songs, explored our bodies and our sexuality, and we studied pre-Christian religion in order to rediscover and claim our feminine spirituality. We took heart from the idea that sisterhood is powerful. <laughs> By age 26, I was on fire with my commitment to feminism. I was passionate about the potential for change in the plight of all women. And I was enjoying, I was going to devote my energies to making that change any way that I could. Although I didn't yet know how I would manifest this passion, I had an intention for action that was guided by my beliefs of what we deserve as women. Arriving on Whidbey Island in 1972, I was provided the context for me to live out those passions. When the lay midwife who helped me deliver my son Oliver at home um, needed help, I learned how to assist her and so that other women would be able to have the opportunity to have their babies at home. I um, became a childbirth educator and a doula for over 25 years. My first belief is that as women, we deserve to have control over our bodies in family planning, in childbirth, and in our health care in general. On South Whidbey, Fools provided me a great venue for performing. And my second belief is as women, we deserve the avenues to explore and express our creativity 
even when we have families. When a workshop was offered on how to tune up and rebuild your Volkswagen, <laughs> I signed up thinking that's what every woman should do, right? We all want to know how to do that. Okay, so then when I heard, and that's Matt Hasrick, and when I heard that the Shell gas station in Clinton was for rent, I jumped in and took it on, despite or maybe because it was a non-traditional job for women. My third belief, as women, we deserve to be included in all careers, all avenues of professional development and trades, and on an equal basis with men, including our wages. When Oliver was small, I created the Yellow Cabin Preschool so that he would have friends to play with, parents could work, and women could have creative time out. Once Siri and Oliver were both in school, I closed that preschool program and gave all my equipment and supplies to a fledgling childcare program that was starting up at the senior center. I never guessed that when that board of directors from the South Whidbey Children's Center was looking for a new director in 1980, they would come and ask me to apply. And so early childhood and parent ed became my career. Um, let's see. And for the next 25 years at the Children's Center and continuing today at Playscape and the South Whidbey Parent Co-op Preschool, I am constantly exploring ever more creative ways to work with children and families in our changing technological society. My fourth belief is as women, we and our children deserve quality, affordable childcare so that both have opportunities to grow and develop to our full potential. And children are our future, so hopefully every child can have a healthy childhood. My last um, belief is that women deserve partners who participate equally in raising their children and keeping a home. In conclusion, I believe that opportunities opened up for me not only because of my timing or my awareness or my connections, but because my focus was upon the intentions I held in my heart. This in, these intentions have stayed with me throughout my life and they have just played out in different ways. I hope that each one of us, the world needs each one of us and wants each one of us to find that thing that we care most deeply about and take action. That's the only way that things will ever change. And I'd like to wish you all a happy International Women's Day, which was yesterday. Thank you. Thank you.